This is gonna be fun. We have the big red mailbox again with a note from Mary. Dear UTC, please design a house that makes me feel like a kid again. We're gonna take something really, really small and make it really big today, guys. Join me for a little more Ark Building Ascended. I'm Unite the Clans. Today we begin in the redwood forests of the island, and we're gonna start with our first foundation. Get it in the ground in the first 30 seconds. Quick twist for luck, and pop it in. Excellent, the video's off to a good start. This will be the front porch of a house, inspired by a miniature, a very tiny version of a real house. You know, it's fun to build imaginary houses when you don't have the house of your dreams, and this person is from a reality show that airs on Canadian TV. The designer of this house, her name was Tiff, and I watched this show with my partner called Best in Miniature, and I found it very inspiring. It's available on the CBC streaming app with an outrageous number of ads. Thank you, Canada. But a very cool product, and uh, it's awesome that they share it. Uh, and I... Uh, I so enjoyed it watching these people build miniature versions of uh, dreams they'd had, homes they could imagine, and that's what the miniaturists often do. You build a house that, that inspires you, but that you might never get to have in real life. That's this recurring theme, and I think that's probably what some of us arc builders do too. And uh, we do this, we sometimes get to feel like a kid again, but we're playing it adult too. You don't have to punch a wall, don't know why I did that. But we've now got stone covering up our wooden foundations, and we managed to anchor that in place. We built the big wall on the right and the small wall here on the left and that holds these three at the bottom. Now we'll do a whole row of these across the main build leaving just a little gap in the middle for a door which we will now frame out. So this is in many ways inspired by a dollhouse and the person who asked for it said they well they asked for anything. This is my style. <laughs> they said they want to feel like a kid again right and I think the only way to do that is to make this house really big in the arc world. Make everything a little oversized so when you walk through the front door you feel wee and tiny and we'll begin here with a design for a set of windows on the front you can see all the walls I've laid out now we'll fill in the space in between the stone and greenhouse glass walls with these quarter walls that will make this look neat and tidy the doll's house version uh, the miniature I should never say dollhouse they never call them that but uh, it's built in the same way where you build the front and the sides to look amazing and you leave the back wide open so you can do the interior in equal or sometimes more impressive detail and then they end the series by doing the outside we're not going to think about that part but I'm going to design you first the outside of this miniature house it's a log cabin and we're going to make it extra large so that we feel like kids as we run through it uh, and I think uh, sh her design had these nice tight pillars on the side ours are arc ones are a little looser I could use maybe stone and paint it the right color but we're gonna stick with wood because I have plans for the stone pillars later on in the build and we've had to build with ceilings off to the side here guys I hope you'll sit back and enjoy this design. The first song has ended. Take a deep breath. We're going to be building for a while. Get into the vibe, and together we'll make something very cute and cool. You know, a lot of ARC uh, people end up building sort of masculine energy things, Vikings and Romans, and I've done all those things, and I think it'll be fun to lean into the other side of it and uh, make something uh, a little more fairy tale, a little more from the imagination, but based on something real. <laughs> so it's a real log cabin, maybe, that this person saw, and then they designed a miniature version of it, and now I'm using all the tricks I know in ARC, like here lowering my pillars, so they set uh, a half foundation uh, below the original snap point, and we're going to use it to build up a front porch design, where the pillars come up a little beyond uh, the top here, and we may replace this wood with another material, we're just going to try this out, um, but I found the whole show very inspiring, and I might actually be inclined to do a couple more designs from season three which I just watched and I thought this would be a fun way to present it for you guys to kind of do uh, the front and this is the part that you have to figure out for yourself anyway once you get the front you can take these design elements and build the rest of the house and but we're gonna leave the sides uh, done kind of to a minimum we're gonna do the front up like a boss and then we're gonna make rooms on the back and we'll try and fill up the rooms uh, if uh, I'm so inspired I don't know how many of them I'll do and how many of the original designs I'll stick to from Tiff's beautiful home miniature home but uh, I think her window 
windows have a lot of trim on them and I think what we need to do is use stone pillars to make this glass look more part of the wall and she also has window boxes so they'll be gr bright green and bright yellow as well as bright red on the front of this house when we're done and those metal pillars will be the yellow part the stone pillars there will be green those are the first two things going in that we'll paint and then we'll also paint this bit of trim we're gonna build in a custom door and I can't remember how many tries it takes or if I come back to work on this later but uh, we'll put a ceiling here this is gonna allow us to use a pillar across these quarter ceilings that we have above the door they don't like to go unless you give them something else to snap to and then once again we're building our pillars a little off what would naturally happen with foundations they're going through the middle of the foundation with the middle of the pillar and we have a differently shaped door so I think we'll paint that bit of trim red as well as the door that goes in the center but I'm pretty happy with our ground floor design and the beginnings of our front porch I hope you guys are too if you enjoy this click the like button and tell me in the comments uh, if you have if any of you have seen this show it's pretty obscure I tried googling her house I can't even find pictures of it I had to go back into the app and and pause the screen to find good pictures and I'll have to do the same if I tackle the interior so I don't want to make any big promises but we'll definitely build the outside now and in layer two we're gonna use wood uh, we're gonna use the regular log cabin sort of pattern with the horizontal uh, logs and we'll leave the interior design to the interior and then at the next tier up we're gonna flip it but after one row of wooden walls on top we're going to switch to sloped walls and we're going to build up this way uh, on the second level we have this balcony and we're going to have an oversized door entrance something we can't even represent with uh, it's in between a gate <laughs> and a set of doors so we're just going to leave it wide open and once we design the rooms on the inside around it it'll be like looking inside uh, and then uh, I think there's a trick in arc where you can make yourself your character larger or smaller I think it would be very neat to do this and in retrospect I kind of wish I'd built the house the other way so that I could make my giant character look inside the back of it like a dollhouse but uh I think this game is great because you can use your imagination in any number of ways. So our plan here, we're going to use these quarter ceilings to build up so that we can space out the windows on the next floor. And we'll build up like this again, sorry, quarter walls. And then uh, across here at this second level, we will build quarter walls all the way across to meet what we've done. And now you can see we have a differently shaped opening uh, because of the quarter walls. Uh, there's a little more space in that uh, second row of wood. Now, after three rows, of the regular wood we're going to flip everything inside out and we're going to build up with the inside out pattern and we're going to do it in basically the same fashion here we go we've got um the quarter walls popping in and uh, we're going to design a window that will fit in this space the one in tiff's design is very geometric and i can't recreate it in arc but i think my best hope is actually maybe i like the shape on the bottom you know this sort of triangular we're going to put a glass wall in the middle and then up top i think we're going to end up with a tree pattern rather than uh something really geometrical we'll take out these quarter walls here they were just in to get the construction right and we need something to hold up the point that's above our heads so just do one at a time we'll put in this single glass wall and then on a different set of snap points up here we should now be able to put in a little bit of wood actually let's do all wood and some ceilings and then we'll use those ceilings to build greenhouse glass the top of the tree pattern and if you built this house even bigger you could have a third tier to your tree uh, and I'm sure we could do that with a little bit of design but let's take this out and see if that's gonna look good oh very cool for a log cabin it's time for a little paint guys this is called Chateau Green we'll put it on these uh, wooden or sorry these stone pillars that make our window frames and we're gonna also gonna use this color on the roof when we get up top and I think it would be neat if our windows looked quite green uh, just to make this image pop so we'll put a little bit of green on the windows up top as well when we get up there before we do that I think and before we build a roof we need to actually build out this inner foundation a little bigger you know a doll's house or a miniature house is often built so that you can open it up it was always built so you can open it up and look on the inside and I figured if we're gonna focus on some interiors as we build in this new game then um, rather than just the exteriors then we should uh, make our houses work like that and focus on that so I built all with um, wooden foundations where I couldn't filled in three little spots with ceilings and I don't mind that there's rocks coming up through my floor guys we'll figure out what to do with that as we go I did mention wanting some green paint 
here and it looks like I do every region but four. Uh, that makes the windows green and the metal around them green. You can play around with this and see what works best for you, but I, d I do think that helps this thing pop. And because it won't have a back, you'll get a little glimpse of forest through there if we build the thing right. Let's move on to the roofs. We're going to use the shingled side of the sloped wooden roof and we're going to go ahead and build in a way that gives us a sort of exaggerated overhang down here. And I think that'll be nice. It comes all the way down to the edge of the wood, which is sort of uh, true to a design of a style of house like this. And, um, you know, they, when you win on a miniature show, when you do well, it's because you're creative, because you figure out how to tell a story with something static, which is very hard to do. And you have an eye for design and you put things together in a way that just looks good and makes people feel like they would want to live in it. And watching this with my partner and trying to apply my creative energy back to Ark, I've realized how. Uh, how easy it is to do that with a little creativity. So we're adding that same chateau green paint. I think I only want it on the outside and not on the underside. Uh, and so if we paint like this with just region five selected, we should get green roofs and we'll be able to come back later and decide if we want color on the underside. I'm thinking maybe a shadow gray or something like that. Um, and we may even put a little bit of paint on this wood if it makes it look closer to the authentic uh, uh, <laughs> miniature version of the house. So let's run around now on our roofs, have a little fun, spray this green paint everywhere, and we're gonna, when you do this, guys, when you do this to a build, you really bring it to life, and you can step back and go, oh, now I get it. And when I used to do this in Ark Survival Evolved, I was quite pleased with myself. You can decide now if you want the green to show on the front. I kind of like the wood showing, but we may decide that we want the trim to be green as well. For now, we should take a look at the other side. I actually built it in stone and um, give us two versions of this to look at. Let's get right back into the action, guys. We'll replace the four wooden ceilings we used to build our porch with greenhouse glass. I think that'll be nice. It'll add light to the lower level. Then we're going to come around with stone pillars. Uh, we still have the wood ones, but I think the stone will do a nice job creating trim here and making this look a little bit more substantial than it is. And we're going to continue the theme of making this house feel very large. We have a huge build with tall doors and large windows. And I think that means we need an extra high railing. If you want this build to make you feel like a kid, the railing's gotta come up a little bit higher. And I think if we do that here, it will accomplish the task. Looks very good to me. And at some point in the near future, we're gonna have to address the very large hole in the middle of our design. We will be installing windows here in the second level and a large door. Before we do that, let's decide uh, make a final decision on our ceiling. I did show you the stone version. I'm pretty confident we like it in wood, so let's go ahead and remove this. We'll replace the whole thing with these shingled wood roofs, and then we'll add our paint to each of these tiles. You can play around with different colors and see what works for you. We've chosen Chateau Green, and it really pops on here. And I really enjoy getting to add these details. We've already got some on the other side. And now, actually, we'll build our house back deeper. This is up to you guys. You can build this back as far as you like or add in more layers or details. But because we're going for a miniature house look, we're going to create just... Uh, rooms with at least one open side and that'll be the back so we can build this back three that should give us a little bit of depth to play with as we design bedrooms etc further on in this build and this build is a good example of one I would like to collaborate with people on. We'd have to get back to the state where I have a server and can set up a, a Patreon or something like that to bring you guys in. But there's a lot of little rooms in a house like this and I never, <laughs> it's hard for me to commit to decorating all of them. Uh, and having you guys uh, share a server with me and maybe get people in to help me decorate would be very fun. But that's an idea for the future. It's something we used to have back in the day and we haven't had for a long time. But let's have a little fun with it, guys. We're just slapping this amazing green paint on the roof on a sunny day in the redwoods and we're bringing our imagination to life so have a little fun with it rip around the roof and spread this green paint everywhere feel like a kid again right looks good to me guys now let's dive into the underside of our roofs this is a choice you guys can make but at least on the trim we're going to add steel here in region six region five was our shingles uh, where we added the green and here with region six, we are painting the undersides. And now that we've done that, you can see it's a little bit darker. We won't do it on the whole inside though. We may customize these room by room. 
The next thing we need, of course, is red paint. I promised red, green, and yellow, and we're gonna head to the door to place our red paint. And we're starting with a darker color. I don't think that's gonna work. We're looking for bright and vibrant. So we're gonna switch from this gore color to red, pure red, and it's gonna be nice and bright, <laughs> maybe even ridiculously bright, but it's gonna be a better fix for us than the other. Let's do the whole door frame, uh, at least the pillars around it. And there we go. That is all right, guys, but uh, I think I might want to change the shape of this door. And um, to do that, instead of having a single ceiling here, we're going to actually place two. And we will have our pillars, uh, you know, look like maybe the Roman numeral for two. That's the kind of thing we're looking for here. So we'll put two across the top. We'll hop back in and remove these wooden ceilings. And then we'll play around a little bit with the design of the door. You can see I've added in some wood here. Uh, we'll keep playing until we find something we like. But I'd really like to make sure the red stands out and pops. And that means adding in a little bit more than just a door and the pillars in red. So let's keep playing. I have an issue because every time I try and build with wood, I end up with a strange gap on one side. I wonder if we did inside out stone, if we would have the same issue. I think if we do it just this way, it works out fine. But uh, when I try and inside out it I end up with a little gap so what we really need is for the stone quarter wall see that guys see that little gap what we need is the stone quarter wall to have two versions like the wood does as well so we can mix and match these and uh, it would be nice to be able to use these here but I don't like that little gap on this miniature show when the judges are coming through they look for finish details and that means I keep playing with it and playing with it eventually we come back and install these pillars and uh, uh, I will settle on a final design this wooden piece can come out it actually makes it harder for you to get the snap point you want you'll sink your pillar down like this and put another one on top so we have a wall and a half height but everything else is a mess right now and we need to fix it up Let's take, honestly, this piece I moved over, trying to make it all look nice, but I think it just needs to come out and shift back to the left and flip around in its original position, and then we'll just simply play with the trim around the door. Try and get create something that pops and stands out for us. You can see I've tried the inside out stone. Uh, I've tried wood as well. I'm pretty sure these wood pieces stay in that position. And we end up with stone around the outside. Uh, but we try everything, <laughs> honestly, to uh, uh, mix these two materials without having a sort of strange and unsightly gap. And um, this version doesn't work so hot for me either. It's nice on this side, but if I were to do it on the other side, I would need pillars once again to close up the little uh, gaps in light that pop through. So that is one way to do it with all wood. But now our door is almost as wide. In fact, it's wider than it is tall. And that isn't the look I was going for. So I think what we'll do is probably come back after we place a door in here and try out a little red paint and we'll do stone on the sides. Let's go with the double door and we'll put a wooden door frame in. We're using the inside out texture here uh, to get, uh, well, I think this looks really nice with the paint on it, guys. This is the brighter of the two sides once you apply paint. Um, you can see I have now done it here <laughs> just about everywhere. The wood has kind of a darker tone to it in most places, especially on the back there. Uh, but if you do it like this, the pillars and the wood match pretty nicely. And that's all painted in red. But I think, like I said, the door's a little bit too wide. So the last thing we'll do is come in here one more time with stone. And we can probably even remove these stone pillars after we've got these pieces in place. If you do them inside out like like this or you do wood on the side you're going to want to use these pillars just to create trim but uh, uh, if you flip the stone back to the other face and I think that's what we end up doing in a second you'll end up with the neatest and tidiest of looks and this is okay but you'll notice even if I remove these I have a little gap right there in the wall and it's kind of unsightly so we'll remove all of this and um, either leave the pillars in place like this or strip it all back and just do stone right up to the edge of the door and create that Roman numeral two shape. We've spent a long time on this section guys and I think that's okay when you get into a build like this it's sometimes you get lost in the details and getting lost in the details is good it's how you make them nice and uh you know, we tried a few different things, but that's the best version, and I think it's going to work for us in this design. In the next section, we're going to have to head upstairs, fill in that gap, and work on windows and a large entrance to our deck. Welcome back, guys. Let's get right back down to business. We're going to make our upstairs windows using these stone pillars. 
Before we even build the walls, we can frame out the windows and step back and see how it looks. I think that's gonna work. These are perfectly in line with the row below, and I may decide to actually move them in a little bit to the right. We'll, we'll play around with uh, the windows and the large door that we wanna create here. Remember, this house is supposed to give us a feeling of being small, right? And uh, I think if we make everything oversized, it will do that. Now, one thing that I failed to learn, you know, I mentioned in section two, we got a little lost in the details of this build, working on that door frame. The artist who created this, Tiff, her takeaway at the end of all these episodes when she made it down to the final three was to overcome her perfectionism and just to get it done there isn't enough time to do it the way that it's perfect in her imagination and get as close as she can and oh my gosh the raptors do not like the red door now i have a, a passive policy with these guys why don't you guys just get lost i'd rather not deal with dead raptors around here thank you see you later all right pack leader all right red belly what are you doing in there Guys, I think this is perfect. Sometimes dinosaurs just insist on being mascots for your build. Uh, I had to stop and look up the name of Tiff's dog, but she included it in her design, and his name was Chip, and I think he dug up holes and made a mess in the yard. And why don't we just keep this one stubborn raptor who wouldn't jump off a cliff? We'll pop him back here, maybe build a doghouse for him at the end. But for now, let's get back to the details that we were trying to put into place. Good start, look at the sun. We've lost half a day playing around already, guys. These windows are fine, but they're not where I need them to be. Looks a little too wide to me. And we'll move the whole thing, both upper windows. We're gonna move them in by a half wall, a quarter wall piece will go in here, giving us a half wall of width and moving everything in a little bit. And then if we do the exact same process, pillars, and I like to do the vertical ones first, that way they're snapped to the piece above and not the pillar across the top. We'll start with the hardest one to get in place and then we'll fill in the shape. Now we have to decide what to do with our windows, guys. I've still not put the yellow paint into this build and that's for window boxes. And we have to do more green paint on these upper stone sections. But before we do that, we need to also build in stone the door that's gonna go in between here. And you can see it's a little more time consuming to build with these quarter wood pieces because you have to flip them back and forth every round. But I find that they're very versatile in letting you create the shape you want. Step back and then make a slight adjustment to your build. It's been great playing with these and I really enjoy it, but you have to get them right. Otherwise it's gonna look very messy. And you can see I put each alternating row I can build at a time and that's a door shape. I don't know if it's exactly the one we want guys, uh, but we will try it out with a little framing in stone, removing this stray piece, this vagabond of a quarter stone wall. Let's put um, two ceilings in up top. And we're gonna use those to create uh, a snap point for these pillars, and then we can come back and remove them. We've done this a few times throughout the build. It's nice to peek on the inside, and I'll promise to come back and build at least a few dollhouse floors in here, even if I don't decorate the entirety of the design for you guys. Uh, you know, uh, one, it's, I often, okay, well, here you go, guys. That's why I don't wanna do it like this, because that pillar's gonna stick through and we wanna paint it green, and I don't want green sticking through my balcony. So let's adjust. We're gonna make the middle door come up to the same height as the windows. We'll remove those four quarter walls across the top and the pillars below them, and <laughs> try not to remove anything else. But that's okay. It's easy to put these pieces back together if you may make a mistake, and, and, and with a, a hollow house, with a, 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 a facade of a house, you know, it's, it's hard to hit something in the background that you've already spent time on because we're just working on the front. And, um, you know, I think I, I picked up something. I like to pick up little details from everywhere, from miniature artists. But I heard a thing in a book I was reading about Jackson Pollock, who's a famous artist who t lived in the, the, the world of art at its most abstract when we're searching for new forms of expression and he would splatter canvases with paint and it would come together in a way that was like geometrically perfect and it just pleases the eye and not everybody likes it but he described his creative process as like 
when he was in the flow, it just painted itself, right? And uh, and when you stop and get too lost in the details, you lose some of that because the best parts of my builds, when I have to do the least editing, are when I'm lost in the flow. So let's go back to, and find our flow with a little yellow paint. I promised three bright colors on the front of this build. These are window boxes in our imagination. And if there's a mod that lets you add those or Arc eventually adds that tool, that would be neat. But I'm not going to stick a big clumpy clop crop plot out here for now guys and try and plant your flowers this is we're just going to get a close approximation now the upper windows don't have the window boxes in tiff's design and i think that it's probably likely they shouldn't it's close to the balcony but reaching these far flowers and watering them would be quite a dangerous challenge so instead of imagining another set of window boxes with uh yellow paint up here we'll keep the yellow to the main floor we could always add it here i think to the bottom of this with section three or four uh whatever we just did down there but i think that's enough yellow uh, i wish the pillar matched the uh uh the metal a little better i wonder if the stone will do the job let's try one and four that's okay but that actually looks less like a window box it looks more like the window frame so i think we'll go back to this stone and we'll just have to use our imagination and uh, maybe one of you guys has a mod that lets you do these kind of things but it's neat to add details like this and the more we get into ascended we'll find the mods that work uh, to add a little bit of color to the game without making it feel drastically different but I love this build. It's done in the game in its natural state. I've not got any hacks or mods or anything. This is as vanilla as it gets. But we're trying to make it unique and original. So I want these windows to really feel green. So we're going to try out a couple of different regions and try and get a little color change on our window. There you go. Region 4 gets you these verticals. But I think I might actually want to play around till I get the... Uh, the, the glass itself green as well as you see up at the top of our design I don't have any angular pillars that can kind of unify these upper and lower windows but if I match them in color I think by region 5 yes add region 5 and you get green glass which is a nice touch I think this is going to look good and it'll unify upstairs and downstairs and the second floor as well which I guess is where we should head uh, it calls for the chateau green paint we're going to paint all of the stone pillars and I think in this case we'll paint the windows and we'll decide what to do with this bottom section I think it's region three I think that's better so let's do uh the windows up top almost entirely in green we will frame the sides and the top with these stone pillars also in chateau green and we will also do the same with our door frame let's step back and take a look once we've added a little more green paint to this thing and um we'll decide what needs to be done next i think at this point the front of the house is pretty much done and we'll just have to look and go where is the next place to add some detail and take your time with this step guys if you're not sure what to do next go do something around your house put away your christmas decorations that's what i'm gonna do today when i need a break and go make yourself some food take a little you time and if you're getting lost or stuck in the details of an arc build or in something in your life just shift the gear for a minute and go do something different but i think the thing that's needed next is when you look in this giant window to see something other than forest behind and we need to start adding some depth now at this point we're pretty deep into this video it's about a half hour so if I decide to add more to this to show you guys the inside and let's shed a little light on the situation uh, then uh, it's going to be quite a long video or I'm gonna need a part two and this doesn't feel like a two-parter so I think I might just keep playing around with this we'll do a little bit of the inside and then maybe I'll leave the rest to you guys and your beautiful beautiful imaginations to do something with this and uh, you can find me and uh, share with me your ideas and designs for what you would do with the inside of the house once again comments are a great place to do it for those of you that have made it half an hour into a building adventure with me and my bizarre mind I thank you <laughs> It's always fun to share my thoughts and my designs and my creativity with you guys and one of the hardest parts of being creative is that it comes with this voice in your head because every time you decide yes I made this and I like this you're deciding a bunch of things you didn't do and you didn't like and those go kind of go hand in hand so we've added a little bit of 3d depth but we're gonna need to do a lot more to make this feel like more than a hollow shell of a house so I thank you for hanging with me as we build in this uh, in this sort of 
fanciful style. The house is a little too big and it's going to make us feel like a kid and it's based on a really tiny version of a house that also can make you feel like a kid. We're playing with the extremes and um, now we're going to play with some paint. I believe this is steel gray, the color I chose. And what we're looking to do is at first I was looking to find a way to make this wood just inside the frame pop. But after playing around, I think region six here does it for me. I go, oh, that's cool. That really looks like Tiff's house and it's almost the same color as these wood logs. Maybe we could paint the top of the house that way. Let me try again, I decide. And I go back just to region five and six, I think. I put this in place. Region two, I think, region three, which is the other one. It's almost perfect. Try this out, four, it's four. And look, look at that little yellow dot. All these pins, all these tiny little details in this wood that show that these pieces are handmade and held together. And this is a beautiful thing. In Ark, they can stay a different color. And we can paint this wood to be weathered and to match the logs down below, but it can have these little pops of brightness that show the house is lived in. Somebody's come by since they built it and tapped in new pieces to hold the house together, whatever your imagination tells you. But that, for me, really looks good. And I don't remember being able to do anything like that in the old Ark. Welcome back, my friends. The outside of the house looks amazing. In the sunlight, we have accomplished our goal of feeling tiny in a giant build inspired by a miniature, but the downside to that is we have a massive amount of space on the inside. One thing I love about this show is that um, the... Oh, by the way, take a look. One more time, this wood with the little light-colored pegs. I use that when I go to work in the loft upstairs. But one of the things I love about the show is that people dream small, and they don't mind bringing their small dreams to life. I tried here to bring uh, Tiff's dream kitchen to life and I realized it takes me way more time and I need to take her advice and give up on perfectionism. But a big red fridge, colored backsplash, and attempt at a stove and a sink and as true to her design as possible. But it slowed me down, friends, and we have a lot more to do. So we're going to frame out the rest of this house, create little rooms, and I'll do a little bit more interior decor to fill up the space. In the meantime, we are going to talk about those tiny dreams and I love it. When Tiff uh, was in the final three, she said if I win, I might get to be a full-time miniaturist. And it's not a big dream, and there's not that many people who get to do it, but it's a noble dream, and I wish she had won, but the other winner was very uh, deserving as well. But I will say this, guys. My small dream is to keep building in video games and have your love and support and be able to be confident every time I do this. So I thank you for watching and for giving me your attention and support. This room was inspired by the night sky. I did yellow pegs on twilight paint on the back wall to give the idea of stars in a night sky but a twilight uh, a skylight was the only thing that did the trick and i added a spiral staircase inspired by tiffs it comes down and connects to the main kitchen and uh, i think this is the best room i did but i couldn't give this much attention everywhere else so i improvised creating this dining room over here the table feels a little bit too big like everything in the house and i used fire to light up the space. You can see I framed it in at the back here. I didn't need to do that. And then I put some of my efforts into a main bedroom. I think it looks excellent. It has the feel of walking up to your parents' bed. That's a new attempt for me, trying to build something in this scale. We added lots of storage. And Tiff, from the show, is a musician, has her own band, so she had a music room. I just threw in a drum kit for fun. I think that works. And we have been, uh, we have almost completed this. I have a, a little space above our heads that I never did anything with. And I think, um, um, because we did this in the style of a uh, miniature house, we didn't bother connecting all the rooms with stairs, etc. I think this would be a good spot to create a hallway space. The hall will have some light from the central window. Each room will get some space from the side and a combination of materials makes that feel a little more intimate. So if you design it, go ahead and play around with this. Let me know what you think, guys. But as for me, I'm done with perfectionism and I'm quite content with how this build turned out. Ignore the dead raptor. I'm sorry. I promised that might happen. I love the big red fridge and the spiral staircase and how big this whole design feels. The bright primary colors. I really think it came together for us and I'm quite proud of what we've done today. Even in the pouring rain of the island, this build looks superb and it feels monstrously large. I thank you for hanging out with me guys and I will move on to the next project. But let me know in the comments what you think of this design and this flight of fanciful imagination. I'm Unite the Clans. This has been Ark Building Ascended, and I'll see you in the next one.